what you said there of like, we were never meant to like go through or carry loss and death because that wasn't in our original design. We were never meant to face those things. That's why it is so hard for us to process and go through those things because it's like, this isn't how it was supposed to be. Hello, 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 ladies and gents, and welcome to this week's episode of the Bought and Beloved podcast. As always, it's your girl, Kirby Kelly, also known as Kirby as a boss on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And this week on the Bought and Beloved podcast, I know that we have had so many incredible back-to-back guests. We had Jacob Peterson, we had Zach Wendell. We're also going through the Galatians series. Don't worry, I have not forgotten about that. But I wanted to take a little pause through that and bring on my friend, Ann Wilson here to the Bot and Beloved podcast because not only is she one, an incredible woman of God, but she has a beautiful testimony that she's been able to bring about and communicate through her music, through her book that's coming out. Um, and we're going to talk about all those things and more. But before we do, Anne, how about you just introduce yourself to everybody, let everyone know a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what it is that you're passionate about. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on here. This is so amazing. I was telling you earlier that I'm a huge fan of you and I like lo- used to love watching your YouTube videos. So this is super cool to be doing this with you today. Um, I grew up in Kentucky, in Lexington, Kentucky, and um, I'm 20 years old. I moved to Nashville af- right after I graduated high school a couple years ago. Um, and I grew up really just like in an incredible Christian home. My parents and my, uh, I had a sister and and a brother. Um, and we just really were always close growing up and was raised in a Christian home and became a Christian when I was 12 years old and, um, really just fell in love with Jesus and started to pursue him and, um, have a relationship with him. And then as I got a little bit older, I, um, just started to really have this passion for wanting to be an astronaut and I wanted to work for NASA. So that way. Yeah, and yeah, I like met with NASA my freshman year of high school. Um, me and my parents took like my parents took me to NASA and we met with them and um, we just I just wanted to be an astronaut. So that was like a big passion of mine for a while. Um, and then I started to get into music in 2017 after a big tragedy in my life when I lost my brother Jacob in a car accident. Um, he was 23 years old and. Um, he tragically died in a car accident. And so that was kind of the moment that like everything changed for me. And I started to really see the Lord calling me into music. And, and so I started to pursue after, um, just pursue after the Lord and see what he was going to do. And then he ended up, you know, giving me this incredible platform to share my story and be able to minister to people. And so it's been really cool to see what God's done in just five short years. Dang. Well, first of all, I'm so sorry for your loss. And I know we're going to be talking about that today and kind of getting into sensitive subject matter regarding tragedy and loss and and heartbreak. And I mean, I haven't gone through that specific situation, but as someone who has also lost a family member and it was in a tragic way um, and knowing that my audience, there's a lot of people out there who relate to that kind of stuff, have gone through it, are going through it, maybe will go through it. I'm sure that this is going to be an episode that really does bring about a lot of hope for people. I mean, that that was the heart behind your song and the heart behind um, your book as well. And um, also, congratulations. I saw that you were, what, Caleb's uh, Female Artist of the Year, and yeah. your song has just, like, completely blown up. And it, I think I – did you perform it at um, Together 22 at the Cotton Bowl? Yes, I did. I were saw – I was there, and I heard you perform it, and I, I think I cried because some of the oh. lyrics that you were saying in the song, from what I remember – Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember them, but I remember crying to your music because I was just like, this is so good and like so encouraging, I think, for anybody walking through any form of of tragedy or or doubting God, maybe in a season where they're going through a lot of stuff. So even for me, like your music and I know your book, it's like such an encouragement. And so congratulations on the achievement and also know that God is like blessing the work that you are doing. So thank you. That's so encouraging. Absolutely. So um, I, w- I would love to know, you know, kind of talking about your healing journey a little bit. Um, can you tell us kind of what that process was like for you dealing with grief? I mean, there's probably a lot of layers to it. And especially in, in relation to 
your relationship with God and your perspective of God in that season. I would just love to know maybe what that experience was like for you and how you were able to process or heal or hurt through that time in your life. Yeah, I think um, that whole season of losing my brother was really hard. I think as a family, it was um, actually pretty healing. I feel like we kind of came closer together through that season. But Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing that I had to realize in the very beginning of losing my brother was you're kind of faced with the reality of loss. And then you're faced with this question of whether or not you're going to trust God or not. And I remember being in the moment of just finding out I'd walked downstairs to the police officers in our home telling us that he had died in a car accident. And, um, like seeing my parent, my mom was like pulling out her hair and my dad was screaming and crying. And my dad had never, I'd never seen my dad cry my whole life. And like being faced with those images in your head is so painful. Um, just being faced with the reality that your best friend's gone and you're not going to, um, that I wasn't going to see him again until heaven. And like, it was so painful, but I could sense God just saying like, are you going to trust me or are you not? And there's so much to that, you know, when we talk about suffering in the Bible and like how God, um, people always ask, you know, why does God allow suffering? Why does God not just stop it from happening? And there's so much to that. But I think I had to come to terms with the fact that God allows it to happen for our good and for his kingdom. And um, I think coming to terms with that was really hard for me and my family, but being able to just accept it and and know that at the end of the day, no matter what, we're going to choose to trust God. Um, And that was a big part of our healing journey was in the beginning saying like, we're going to trust you, Jesus, no matter what comes, no matter what comes out of this, we're going to trust that you have a greater plan. And obviously he did, because now you look at everything he's doing in my life with my music and it's, it's not because of me, it's because he chose to use our family's story to help impact other people. And so we see later on, like what he's done with the tragedy and how he's you know used it for good. But in those first few moments, it was, it was really hard because we had to choose to trust him and it can be super, super easy to blame God, to be angry with God. Um, but I really never felt those feelings because I knew that the only way I was going to survive it was with God by my side Mm -hmm. and without him. And so that was a huge part of our healing journey was really just seeking the Lord. And, um, that really helped us. I mean, I would not have survived it without Jesus. He got me through, he got our family through, he was so faithful and so kind and just so there for us when we needed him and, um, continues to kind of pull us through the grief journey. And it's been over five years and it still feels like it's really hard to get through. But, um, I think it's just part of, it's part of the journey and the cycle of grief and there's not really a timeline to it, but with the Lord by your side, it makes the world of difference. And it's so good to know that like my brother is with Jesus and that's where the comfort. Mm-hmm. comes from. So I'm like so proud of you for having that understanding and that perspective. Cause that's not like an easy or a natural way to view a situation like that. Like you said, it's, it's so easy for people myself included, like when I lost my dad, it was so easy to turn to God and to be angry with him and to have all these questions, like reasonably so, like, why would you allow this to happen? You're, you're supposed to be good. You're supposed to be sovereign. You're supposed to be all these things. And you allowed this to happen. Like why the, the biggest question that we have in any, any circumstance of tragedy, why God, why are you doing this? And I think I was talking about this with my friend Zach on the podcast not too long ago that so often in scripture, um, we don't always get the answers that we expect. Mm -hmm. And maybe we don't always get the why, but especially right then and there in the moment, why did this sad thing have to happen? This suffering, this, this, I don't know, cause of, of death, like as a result of just sin in the world that we die, that we face tragedy. But What is important, especially when we look at Job or in the Psalms or in Lamentations, just like these or in Ecclesiastes, these books that display like human emotion of of mourning, of loss, of going through the stuff. Like Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we might not always know why, but we can always know who to turn to and who's going to be there for us and who's going to provide like you said the the comfort and the joy and the peace that surpasses all understanding um and i think even with you like you said god was able to it's been 5 years now and in those 5 years 
even like going very back to the beginning when he made you, like he made you with specific gifts and talents and, and passions and desires and, and ways to communicate and relate to people that even in going through loss, those things were able to blossom and to bloom, like the gifts that he gave you to, to minister to people. I mean, maybe he's going to send you to space to like, you know, bring the gospel <laughs> to to the moon or something play at the first church be the first worship worship pastor on mars i don't know but you never know space cowgirl right space christian cowgirl but um the coolest thing though is that like he gave you gifts and talents and desires and even through loss he was able to activate those things to bless people and so even people who are listening today not to not to discredit like the loss or or the hurt that you're going through in your situation but maybe we can step back and see what has God given me passion dream desire talent whatever that is and what am I currently going through that maybe those things can merge together in order to be a blessing for somebody else because your family and your story and your book are impacting people And in a a way that maybe otherwise you wouldn't have been able to step in and relate to people and and bless people. And I don't know, is there anything that you want to add to to that or that that vein of thought or thinking? Yeah, I totally see how God's hand was in my life, even as a little girl preparing me for this and um, gave gave me a gift of, of music that I never knew I had or never used or whatever. And like, the Lord was so good to, to kind of prepare me for that. And I think that, um, I always remind myself of when I'm, when people talk about tragedy and loss and, Mm -hmm. um, the question of why does God allow it or whatever. It's, it's always for me, it's like, we don't even deserve to be alive. Like let, let alone be forgiven of our sins to have a God that sent his son to die for us, to have eternity with Jesus and like have that opportunity. And I think, um, I always remind myself that, that God designed us for the garden, that we were designed for no sin. We were designed for like perfect unity, communion with other people, like Mm -hmm. nothing bad. And then when Adam and Eve chose to sin, that's when we now have to suffer the consequences of that. But we weren't designed for that in the beginning. And so I think reminding yourself, like as you're going through loss for people listening, like there's so much grace when you're going through loss, like God understands your pain. He did not make you to have to go through suffering. And that's why when we lose someone we love or we go through something really traumatic, we don't know how to like handle it. Like it's, it's almost more than we can handle because we're not supposed to handle it. We're supposed to yes. give it to him and, and let him do it. And so um, just encourage you guys listening that God is able to handle all of your emotions. He's able to handle everything you're going through. And um, it's super important to give that to him and let him carry that weight for you because you, you literally can't carry it on your own. It's impossible because we weren't made to carry it. And I think after I realized that like, I don't have to go through this loss alone. I don't have to do this in my own strength. That's when I felt such a peace. And I just felt like this weight was like lifted off of me and that I could just, I could be free and allow God to carry that for me. And so I think that's where a lot of the freedom comes from after you've gone through something tragic. That is so good, especially just what you said there of like, we were never meant to like go through or carry loss and death because that wasn't in our original design. We were never meant to face those things. So literally like you just blew my mind with that statement of just like, that's why it is so hard for us to process and go through those things because it's like, this isn't how it was supposed to be. So like, how do I, how, like what is going on here? And even, even, that is so good. And you have no idea that literally just blew my mind. But I even think about like, I think this is the prime example that so many people go to when it comes to loss in scripture is Lazarus and Jesus weeping over Lazarus. Mm. Um, And whether or not you've read that story in scripture before or not, or heard that or not, to those of you who are tuning into the podcast, um, Jesus loses a friend. And the thing about Jesus is that I think it's so easy, especially in times of tragedy, whatever that looks like, for us to see God maybe as further away, more Mm -hmm. transient, more, you know, sovereign God of the universe, like all the way over there. But we also have to remember that he came down in the flesh and that he is imminent and he is close to us and he desires to be near to us. Um, So much so that he went through 
the human experience. Like he was the most human human. Like he Mm -hmm. went through every temptation and trial that we would have gone through. And he understands loss. Not only does Jesus understand loss in the sense of I lost my friend Lazarus, like I lost my bestie, uh, but also God understands loss in that he sent his son to die the death that he never deserved, that Mm -hmm. we deserved. Like He allowed his son to go through that. And Jesus himself submitted to going through that. So if anybody understands loss and the the weight of of sin and death and all of those things, it is God. And that is another reason why we can turn to him, because this is something that he didn't even withhold himself from going through. For those of you who have experienced loss, you know that that is something that is horrible you don't want anyone to experience the the weight of that but like god didn't even allow for himself to be like exempt from suffering Mm -hmm. which is crazy to think about like the suffering servant um and and the beauty of what jesus did on the cross is that it brought redemption and it healing takes time even like you said like there there is no timeline on it there's no time stamp on it because there are times where i reflect back on the loss of my father when I was what 10 years old I'm 25 now and I think about that and it's like I still there's still days where I mourn that you know where I see people getting married and it's like well my dad wasn't there for me in that season of my life like I didn't have a dad to walk me down the aisle or and you know anything like that but not not to go down that road but mourning still happens for me in my life but um it's it's knowing that God is there for me and he understands um, and that God has still been able to bring about so much good through that loss that I've been able to press on. And and like you said, have that comfort and have that hope amidst the heartbreak of, of life. And so one question I do want to ask you, you can add anything you want as well, but you know, there's probably a lot of people who are tuning in um, who are experiencing grief and loss and rather than running to God and maintaining that relationship with God, they just want to abandon their faith. Like they're, I'm done. I'm out. These, this experience is too hard and the questions don't have the answers I want. What would you have to say to those people who is maybe unsure of God in this season of their life? Mm -hmm. I think, um, to like say this in the nicest way possible, but it's, you're going to realize sooner or later that you can't do it without him. Mm -hmm. And I think you can try to do it in your own strength and you can try to, um, you know, you can just resent God and be mad at him because he didn't stop it from happening or whatever, but it's not going to take you far because you're going to realize that you can turn to earthly things. You can turn to material things. You can turn to drugs and alcohol or whatever, but it's never going to fulfill you because you were designed by God. And the only person that can fulfill you is God himself. And so I think realizing that is super hard, but it's the reality of it. And, um, I always just remember in the very beginning of losing my brother and right after my brother died, we lost three other like young guys in our area and that my brother, it was really tragic. And I remember that some of those families were really struggling with their faith at the time. And we were, we were solid in like knowing that we wanted to, you know, keep pursuing God, but they were still kind of in that season of, we don't really know. And I just remember having a talk with one of them and encouraging them in in that and letting them know they've, they've got to trust. And the second that they decided to trust God, everything changed for them. And they started Mm -hmm. to feel this peace that surpassed all understanding, but they didn't feel that peace until they chose to trust God and chose to surrender to him. And I think that that's super important that no matter what you feel about if it's fair or not, or, you know, why did you not stop it? God, those are totally legitimate like feelings that you're going to feel that there's something wrong with feeling that way, but realize that God is in control and that he has the bigger picture in mind, that he's not looking at these tiny little things that are happening on earth, but he's looking at the bigger picture of the kingdom. Um, And knowing that you're going to get to spend all eternity with your loved ones, that you're going to get to see them again, but that God has a plan for you. If you're still on this earth right now, God has a plan for you. Like there's still something that you're supposed to be doing for his kingdom and for his glory that he's not done with you yet. And that was also another thing, like the encouragement of knowing like me and my mom and dad and sister are still here. That means that we still have stuff to be doing. Like God Mm -hmm. still has a plan for why he needs us on this earth. And so I would just encourage you guys to just 
surrender to God. Like you're not, it's not going to be any better. It's, it's going to, it's going to be worse without him. You're going to go down a path of, um, destruction and loneliness and feelings of, of, of just complete isolation. But when you surrender to God, there's so much freedom. He's going to get you through everything. He's going to carry you through. He's going to love you through everything. He's going to be incredibly faithful to you. And you're going to start to see him work in your life. You're going to start to see him turn this tragedy into something beautiful. And you're going to look back and be so grateful that you chose that. And that's why like we have free will to, to choose to mm-hmm. trust God. And it's so important that we do. Um, and I feel like for me, I can't imagine having gone through that season and not trusted him because I literally know that the only reason I survived was because of him. And so it's yeah. like, you've got to trust him. You've got to lean into him and let him be your strength. Um, and there's just so much joy found in that. And as hard as that is, it's just like, like you were talking about, like God understands our pain. Like he lost, he literally had his son go die for us. And so he Mm -hmm. understands he's, and I think that's where there's like so much grace for that. Like for those that are walking through that, there's so much grace that the Lord gives. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to add to that, just about like how you guys are still here because God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And you're, I mean, you're doing the dang thing. You're bringing the gospel to so many people. You're, you're bringing hope to so Mm -hmm. many people going through these things. And I even want to add to that, that you're, your brother's loss wasn't even in vain. Like mm-hmm. his legacy and there like is not only carrying out, but there is still purpose to his life that is being carried out through his loss. So it wasn't a life wasted or just a life taken away too soon. Um, although yes, it's like, yeah, we want our loved ones to be here as long as possible, but one, he's in the presence of perfect peace. Oh my gosh, how much we want that in our world. But yeah. two, his story is having a greater impact maybe than we could have ever imagined. Like we don't, we don't know. We just, we simply don't know what God Mm -hmm. is doing when he allows certain things or doesn't allow certain things that there is purpose that we could have never imagined for our good, for his glory. Um, And that's just another encouragement that just because a person passes doesn't mean their legacy or the impact that they have had is now gone. Like we as brothers and sisters, as family, as friends, we can carry that out to impact the kingdom. Like our brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, who are and who may become one day through their own belief. Um, So I think that's a really cool thought too. And one one verse I do want to add in Lamentations, because we're talking about, you know, God, uh, it's not that God is just passive. He's active. He's, he's sovereign. Uh, but one thing I do want to say, because maybe this will bring comfort to someone listening today, is in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 31 through 33, it says, For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. And I love this verse because it's like, although these things do happen because we live in a fallen world and because there is also plans and purposes in everything God does, he doesn't just allow for things to happen and let us sit there and let us sit in misery, let us sit in pain, let us sit in trauma. He brings compassion. He brings comfort. He brings answers. He brings purpose. I, I, that's a word I keep bringing up, but it's like, it's not in vain. And he doesn't just leave us there he he uses everything and it's just something that we'll never fully understand unless like you said we choose to trust in him he gives us that peace that we we would all always we won't always understand but he brings that peace and that's just it just that's how it is like you you experience it when you go through it and it's true it's just that's how it is it is yeah that's so good I love that well as we wrap up the podcast are there any last maybe thoughts or encouragements or verses or literally anything that you want to um, leave for the person listening? I know that uh, your book is coming out. Uh, it is called, for everyone listening, it's Ann Wilson is our guest, our author, and her book is called My Jesus from Heartache to Hope. So even just knowing why you wrote the book and who the book is for, uh, what do you want to say to the people who are listening that we'll probably end up getting your book because if they're listening to this podcast, I know your book speaks to a lot of what we talked about today. 
Yeah, I would say my, my book, My Jesus, is was really amazing to be able to write because as we released the song in April of 2021, we saw that song just impacting a lot of people. We did not expect that. We weren't like looking for that to happen. And then I started to see like how people were really relating with my story. And so we wrote the book just to talk about the story and go in more depth of the story. And so um, I would encourage you guys listening to go read it or get it on Audible because it it's such a testament to how God can take something so awful and turn it into something so beautiful. Yeah. And the book goes into detail of every single miracle that God performed in our life, every single thing that God did, every single time God showed up, how he never let us down. He was so faithful. And um, and I think it, in the book is called From Heartache to Hope. And it, it just is such an encouragement from how you can be in the depths of pain and then see the hope in Jesus and how he lifts you from that pit of pain and depression and grief and all of those things. And so, um, I really encourage you guys to read the book, um, literally not because of anything to do with me, but because of Mm -hmm. God and how he's so faithful in our family story. And like, it's been so cool to see people already messaging me of like, Hey, I read the book and it's, you know, changed my life and given me a new perspective. And, um, and it's not even really just for people who have lost someone they love, but it's Mm -hmm. for anything that you're through in your life right now and of all ages too I know like some little girls and boys in like third and fourth grade that are reading it and they're loving it it's like it's no matter what season you're in like God can use this story to help you and and speak life into you but um I would just encourage those listening to um just take this next season of life that you're in right now and choose to trust God in the midst of it Mm -hmm. I remember before my brother away. I never really had a season to where I had to trust God. Like I had a great family. Like we were very blessed. We had everything we needed. I never really needed to fully surrender myself to him until my brother passed away. And so look at it as a gift. Like this is an opportunity for you to surrender yourself to him fully. Um, and to just start to see all that he's going to do. And I love like telling people to get a journal out and journal, like what God does every day, like Mm -hmm. pray about something write it down, like look and see years from now, like what God is going to do in your life. And it's just going to be such a gift to know that your choice of surrendering to him, he's going to bless you for that. So, um, there's so much, there's so much to that, but, um, the book really goes into detail of how God goes in the midst of your life and does miracles and redeems you and restores you. And it's been such a gift to, to see how the story has already been impacting people. So definitely check out the book. Um, you guys can get it on, all websites for where you get books and then my website animalsandofficial.com well there you go everybody go check out that book and check out her music too because she's a phenomenal singer um no seriously you're really talented uh and even just with that to add to that when we are going through stuff no matter what it is I know for me hearing about other people's victory and healing and triumph through trials gives me the hope and the encouragement I need to remain steadfast and to keep enduring. So if you just need that, even just like hope and an example to look at that says, I can get through this too, this book is a testament and an encouragement and a platform for you to do that as well. So absolutely, just wanted to add that as well. But Anne, thank you so much for guesting on my podcast today. I'm so happy that I got to have you guest on here and, and share your story and be vulnerable about the things that you went through. Um, but for anybody out there who uh, is interested in, in learning more about you and everything you're doing, is there a, like a, a best place to look you up on social media, website, music? Like yeah. where can people check you out? So on Instagram and Facebook, it's Ann Wilson Music. And then online, you can find my website, annwilsonofficial.com. And that has all my touring dates. We're touring a lot next year, um, finishing up this year in like the West Coast and then starting Winter Jam in January. So um, you can go and find all my touring dates there and new music coming out and all of that stuff, merch and any announcements we have on the website. So. Sweet. Well, you know where to go, guys. And I'll keep it, uh, if you're watching the podcast, not just listening, but watching 
I'll put all that in the description so you can go check out all her stuff. But again, Anne, thank you. And to everybody who's thank listening, you. thank you for tuning in. Yeah. Thank you for tuning into the Bottom Beloved podcast. Uh, feel free to subscribe, to listen to the podcast. I put out new video portions of the episode on Tuesdays. The audio releases on Wednesdays. So subscribe, hit the bell, follow wherever you're listening so you can get notified when new episodes drop. Uh, but until next week, I love you guys and I will see you again here on the Bottom Beloved podcast. Bye.